it's good to see you. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a Word document. This is actually a little section of my new book, River Road. And I just pulled this up because this is the largest Word document that I currently have in my possession. If you ever have a desire to practice uh, doing anything in Word, you can always go to Google and just uh, Google sample text and you can find text that you can copy. Or one thing, it's something that I do sometimes, you can just go to a Wikipedia article and you can copy it. All you have to do is pull up a page, whatever page you want to pull up. Like say I have Google here and I want to go look up Look up the, the Wikipedia article on Aldi. So you can just go to the Aldi page. Now see you have all of this text here. So you want to select all of this text. Well, it's very easy to do. All you have to do on your keyboard is press down the control key and while you hold down the control key, you press A, and that will select all, A for all. And that's going to select everything. Now, the only problem with doing that, if you want to use this text here, see it's also going to select all of this, and it's going to give you all of these links as text. And we don't want that, so you can just click anywhere on that page. And I have a silent mouse, so you will not hear mouse qu clicks because I don't like that. I have a, a shh mouse. It's called a shh mouse. S-H-H mouse. If you don't like all the clicky click sounds, you can get a, we call it a shh mouse here. My kids love them. They use shh mouses, and I do too. I, I hate the sound of a clicky mouse. Okay, so say you just want to select this text, these paragraphs. Uh, it's very easy to do. So what you want to do is take your, you see the little arrow? It's right up here, right there. You want to float that right next to the beginning of the, the text that you want to select. Say we want to select these paragraphs right here. You hold down the left mouse button and drag your cursor down like that. And now you can let that left button go. And as long as you don't click anywhere in here, that will remain selected. The next thing you want to do, um, if you want to select it with your keyboard, you would press down Control, the Control button, and C for Copy, Control C. You want to press the C key as you are holding down the Control key. Now that text is now copied into a clipboard. So if I wanted to go to a blank Word document, which I have one right here, you could do, you could press down the control key and V, the letter V is in Victor, control V. But let me show you what happens when you do that. So we're going to do control V. Now do you see all these blue sections in here and you have this formatting? Okay, these blue sections. Um, are like hyperlinks and we don't want those. There are hyperlinks in here that will take you to websites. Suppose we wanted just the text and not all of those hyperlinks. Okay, and also if you do something in a Word document and you want to undo it, there is an undo button up in your up in your little fields up here, your little ribbon, or you can just do control Again, press down the control key and press Z, as in zebra, and it will undo what you just did. Control Z. Now, I did work in word processing for a law firm for seven years, and this is where I learned a lot of these things. We're just playing around on word right now, and I'm just showing you things as I think of them. I did a lot of work in uh, WordPerfect as well as Word. Personally, I liked WordPerfect better, but in the business world, Word won out. So, one thing you can do if you want to paste the text without formatting, just put your cursor wherever you want it, 
Now this time you're going to click the right button on your mouse and this will pop up. You will get these little options that pop up. Right now we have paste options. So we go to paste options. You have three options. You can keep the source formatting or you can merge the formatting or you can paste it unformatted. That's your final option. That's the third choice. You see these little clipboards. We have little clipboards here. That's going to be your three options for pasting your text. You want to take the, the choose the one on the right to keep text only. That is going to paste it as unformatted. You're going to say, but I still see red and blue in your text. Well, that is because spell check and grammar check is enabled in this document. So if it, it de if it detects what it thinks is a misspelled word, it will underline it with this red squiggly line. If they think it's a grammatical error, it will underline it with two with a blue double underline. So it thinks it's looking at this European European spelling of stylized and Moheim. And it thinks that these are misspelled words. So it's just letting you know. It's just to help you out and let you know, hey, we think these words are misspelled. You might want to check them. But suppose you did not want spell check and grammar check in your document. You can turn this on and off uh, whenever you like. You don't have to leave it on. You want to go up to review and language. You go down to language preferences right here and we have a tab here under word options for proofing and this is where all of your little automatic checks pop up you can ignore words in uppercase you can ignore words that contain numbers you can ignore internet and file addresses flag repeated words like if you type a word twice it will point it out for you if you type it two times in a row now down here is where you will turn on and off the spelling and grammar in Word. Right now we have these boxes checked. Check spelling as you type, mark grammar errors as you type, and frequently confused words. Now I think I want to turn off the spell check and the grammar check. Now you don't have to. Of course, if, if you would rather have them on, you can very easily go into review and then you choose language and under word options you check proofing and that is where you get to the spelling and grammar section. I want to turn it off myself. So when you turn it off, those red squiggly lines and the blue double underlines all go away and all you're left with is just blank text. So that's one good way to get some sample text. You can just go to Wikipedia and look up whatever you like, copy that text and then just paste it you want to uh, remove the formatting and the hyperlinks when you paste it. So now we have our text here. Now this is again text from the Wikipedia article. We could go back to my story if you like. I just wanted to take a moment and show you how you can obtain some text that you can, uh, that you can copy and play with. You can take this text and like if you wanted some typing practice, you could just take a paragraph and you could just take time to uh, type it out. It's hard to type with a phone in my face. Sorry, I can't really see it too well. Okay, now when you're editing your document, I can give you some shortcuts and some quick ways to do edits. Say you're looking here at this, so we're back with this is my story again, this is part of it. Say you're kind of in the middle of the story and you want to scroll back up to the beginning. So we want to go back up to the very first page. Over here, you see this little little gray oval? You can bring your mouse over and your, your cursor, get it over that, click it and you can drag it all the way up to the top and that will take you back to the beginning or if you want to go to the very end you can take that and drag it all the way to the end of the document and that will take you to the end of it 
or if you want to go to the very beginning just using your keyboard you press down the control key and hit home you're going to have a, home, a key it's usually in the upper right corner of your keyboard that says home hold down the control key and press home and look at that it takes you back to the very first page and then you can go from there i give you a little preview that's the that's the little saying you know river road had a little quote that's the quote for holiday but i can't tell you what it means <laughs> Now say you want to go down to a certain page. Let's say this, this document is 346 pages. I'm only about halfway done with this story. Say you want to go to page 200. I have no idea what's on page 200. Again, you can come over to this dark gray oval, grab that mouse. When you do, a little indicator is going to pop up that's going to tell you what page you're on right now. This is page two. And it's going to change. It's very small, it's hard to see, but it's going to change as you go down. And you just scroll down till you get to page 200. There's page 200. All right. What if you want to select certain bits of text? Let's say that you wanted to take out some dialogue in this story. There are different ways you can do it. The way I see a lot of people do it is they will just rest their cursor and then they will just either just hit the delete button a thousand times or they will hold the delete button down and do this. So now that would work if you didn't have a lot to delete, but it would be very time consuming to do that if you wanted to delete a whole lot of text. Another way you can do it, I'm going to undo that. Oh, it's going to undo everything. I just hold down the Z. Because every time I press the delete key, it was one action, so it was undoing one action at a time. Control Z is really great, though, if you make a little goof and you want to undo it really quick, just do Control Z and it will take you back. If you want to redo, you do Control Y as in yes. So say you typed a word. Now if I do control Y, it's going to repeat the typing of that word. I'm holding down the control key and pressing the Y key at the same time. See me typing that word word was one thing. If I type the word thing and then control Y, it's going to repeat thing, 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 thing. Anything you want to redo, you can just do Control Y. Another way you can delete text is by putting the cursor up here at the beginning. Now you can take your mouse. I have the little cursor right here. Your cursor, when it's in the field here, when it's in the field of your text, it's going to look like an I beam or a capital I. Once it goes outside of the margins, which we have our margins over here, it's going to turn into an arrow. Look at that. Just a little arrow. It's still your cursor, but once it's out of the margins, it becomes an arrow. I beam, arrow. I beam, arrow. All right, another way to delete your text. Let's say we want to take out this whole bunch of stuff and this bunch of stuff. You can put your cursor up here at the beginning of the text you want to delete, or at the end. You can actually do it either way. You could put it up here. You could put it down here. It doesn't matter. Now, once you have your cursor where you want it, you want to press down the left button on your mouse and hold it and just drag your cursor across and select everything you want to delete. Now this little field will pop up because Word wonders if maybe you want to change something about this text. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Once you've selected everything you want to delete, you just hit backspace or delete, whichever you want to do. And if you did that by mistake, let's say you didn't mean to delete all of that. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. You can do your control Z and it puts it right back. Let's say you only meant to delete this, but not this. Then once you did your control Z, you're going to undo that delete. It's going to put everything back. And then you can just select whatever it is you want to remove and hit delete or backspace. Either one of them will work. I'm going to put it back again. 
There's another way you can delete this. If you hold down your shift key and press the down arrow, watch what happens. Boom. So I'm holding down the shift key and the down arrow. Now, let's say you want to stop here. You don't want to delete this. If you, if you hold down the shift key and hit the down arrow again, it will go to here and it will take all of that out. If you keep hitting it, it's going to keep selecting stuff. Now, since we have no spaces between all of these words, it sees that as a solid word. Or if you want to select an entire paragraph at once, hold down the control key and the shift key and then hit the down arrow and watch what happens. It selects the entire paragraph at once and you hit delete or backspace and it will take it out. So that will work no matter how big or small the paragraph is. And if it's just a little bitty paragraph like a line of dialogue, you can just do shift down arrow. If it's a bigger paragraph, it doesn't matter. Now again, just shift and down arrow will only select a little bit at a time. It's not going to select the whole thing. What if you wanted to select, say you wanted to take out just this sentence right here. You don't want that. You've, you're reading the dialogue and you've decided you don't like, let's say you want to take these two sentences out. You don't like them for some reason. Well, again, you could just hit delete a bunch of times, take it out, which is what most people do. Or you can put your cursor either at the very beginning of the text you want to remove or the end, either one. Put it there, hold down the left cursor button, drag it across, and it will tend to select one word at a time unless you have it set up to not do that, which you can do under your settings. Once you have it selected, you can press the delete key or the backspace key, and it will take those sentences out for you. Another way, I'm going to do control Z and put that back. Another way you can do it, and I have edited many, many documents in my adult life, especially when I was working in word processing. I was also the proofreader for the law firm during those seven years and beyond. Another thing you can do is you rest your cursor at the beginning of the text you want to remove. At this point, you will press down the control key and the shift key, and this time you're going to hit the right arrow button. And when you, you hit it once, it's going to select one word. If you hit it again, it will select the next one. And again, I'm still holding down the control key and the shift key while I do that. Once you've selected everything, you can let the control and shift keys go. Hit delete or backspace, and it will take those out. Take those sentences out. So that is one way to do it. I do a lot of that. I'm going to take that out. I do a lot of editing, or I used to. I don't do it so much anymore. I am I am now um, an intellectual property paralegal, and I do still have to do some editing of documents, but not as much as I used to. So these skills were much more useful to me in the past than they are now. Now let's say we are looking at this dialogue. Oh, and also you can skip from one paragraph to the next by holding down the control key and hitting the up arrow key, which will take you from the beginning of one paragraph to the beginning of the next paragraph, no matter how long the paragraph is. If you want to go up, you press the control key and do the up arrow. If you want to go down, you press the control key and the down arrow. And it will take you to the very beginning of every paragraph, no matter how long it is. So it's a nice way if you're just reviewing a document and say you're just scanning it and looking for particular things, if you're looking for errors or, you know, just whatever it is, it's a nice way to sort of just scan through the document. You can also do page up or page down. Personally, I don't like that because to me it jumps too far and I don't like it. You can also use, again, your little oval over here. Unfortunately, though, 
when you have a document as long as this one, if you barely, like say you bring your cursor over here and you barely move it, it's going to jump quite a bit. Just, I mean, just barely moving it, it's going to jump you several pages. So with a document this long, I would not really recommend trying to do it with the little, the little thing over here. A shorter document is totally fine. But let's say we want to italicize something in here. Here is Liddy talking to Aiden about a potato sack race. <laughs> this story takes Aiden and Liddy all over the place. It, it has two of the main characters from River Road in it. Let's say we want to take this little bit here and make it italicized. We want to really emphasize her saying this. Well, again, you can take your cursor, press down that left button, pull it across, and select the text. And now, like I was mentioning, this little window pops up here because Word wonders if you want to do something with the formatting. You can actually do a lot of things with the formatting with this little ribbon that pops up right here. You can make it bold. We have a B. It's going to make it bold. You can press that. You can click this little italicized capital I that's going to italicize it so you can italicize it that way we have this capital U for underline it's underlined it will underline your text if you want to add some highlighting color you can do it here you can look at this you can give it some pretty colors and as you float your cursor over each color it's going to show you what it would look like if you chose to use that highlight color and if you want to have no color, you can just click off of that, or you can just choose no color, and it will go away. You can also change the color of your font. Once you choose something, though, this ribbon goes away, so you have to pull it back up. You can choose your font color. You have a lot of colors. These are theme colors, and you have standard colors down here. And again, as you float your cursor over these colors, it's going to show you up here what it would look like. You can choose even more colors. If you come down here to the paint palette and click on that, you can choose from any of these colors here. Look at that. And it gets even better. This is standard. You can go into custom and you can choose from this gradient right here. You can pick your color from this. So you really, really can customize your color. But we're gonna click on cancel because we don't wanna change the color. And again, you see that ribbon goes away. So, your text is still selected. If you want to go back to that ribbon to italicize, all you have to do is right-click anywhere in the selected area, and it will bring your ribbon back. You also get some copy-paste and paragraph options. Now, if we want to italicize it, oh, you can also make your font larger or smaller right here. You can increase or decrease the font. You can do Format Painter. I'll show you that in a minute. Format Painter is really great. You can add a comment, you can do line and paragraph spacing, shading, you can center it. I'll show you how to format the paragraph with some shortcuts. So all we want to do is italicize it. So you just choose that, that italicized capital I. And there you go. So that is now italicized. Let's say we want to underline this here. Again, right left click on your mouse, drag the uh, cursor across, it's going to select your text, and you would choose that capital U that's underlined. And see, now it's underlined. Again, if we want to make it bold, we're going to put our cursor right here and just click right here. Or you can go to the end, it doesn't matter. Left click on your mouse, drag it across, boop, our little, our little ribbon pops up, and you would choose that bolded to capital B. And there you go. I don't use a lot of italics and stuff in my story. I really don't. Um, I find it to be distracting. I use it sparingly. Now let's say we see what we've done to this little section here and we don't like it. Again, hit hold your control key down, hit Z for zebra. It's going to undo the bold first because that was the last thing we did. Then it's going to remove that underline, control Z, takes your underline away. And if we want to take away the, the italics, control Z again, 
So it's going to undo that. Now it will, the control C will go back as far as your last save. So if you just saved it recently, it won't go beyond that save. It won't go back further than that save. Or in my experience, it doesn't. All right. Now what if we wanted to do those things without using that little ribbon? Because I found as I did more and more document work, I find that there are shortcuts that actually you can work faster if you don't take the time to sit here and do that. Of course you can if you want to. You can use your ribbon and your cursor and select. And of course that's totally fine. Or if you don't like that ribbon for some reason, you can select your text and go up here to review. Or you can go to your home ribbon and it's going to have your, your font up here. And you have bold, italics, and underline right up here as well. So you can use the ribbon that pops up or you can use this one. It doesn't matter. It's going to do the same thing. That is not how I do it. Typically, if I want to italicize things, I don't use my mouse much when I'm editing. I do most of my maneuvering with the keyboard itself. And I will tell you why I do that. It's kind of silly. <laughs> many, many years ago, when I first started working for the law firm where I was the proofreader and a word processor, it was extremely cold. I had a win I had my cubicle was right next to a window and it would get very cold over there and my hands would get really cold and I had a contraband space heater under my desk. I wanted to keep my hands as close to the keyboard as possible because the heat from the the space heater would kind of come up from under my desk and if I had my hand way over there at the mouse this hand would get really cold. <laughs> So I learned to do as much maneuvering in my documents with my hands right at the keyboard as possible. And it just became a habit over the years because even in the summertime, it would be extremely cold over by that window because there was an air conditioner vent right above me that blew straight down on me all the time. So even in the middle of summer, I was always freezing. It was horrible. I always kept sweaters and jackets at my, my little cubicle because I was always cold. So if you want, the way I would do it, if I were editing this document, I use the up and down arrow keys and the control keys, the, the left and right side to side. I, I do most of my maneuvering with my keyboard, not my mouse. So if I wanted to select this bit here, I would do control shift, right arrow key, select that. And then I would just press down the control key and hit the I key, control I. Now that makes it italicized. Then I would do control right arrow over to this in, this little bit here. Control shift right arrow. Select that. Do control U for underline. Come over to this one. Control shift right arrow key. Control B. And that does the exact same thing. And I don't have to sit here and select, click, select. I just found it to be faster. It may not seem a lot faster, but to me it was faster. And the more you do it, the faster you get at it. Um, and it, it just gets to where you, you can do this in your sleep and you're not even really thinking about it. Now, I want to show you the Format Painter. The Format Painter is wonderful. I'm going to put a little extra space between these paragraphs. All right. Let's say that we want to do some special formatting, but we don't want to sit here and do it to all of these paragraphs, you know, one at a time. Let's say that we wanted to do small caps and a certain font color on this paragraph and these paragraphs. Well, all you have to do, you don't have to take the time to do it to all of them. I'm going to select a paragraph. Now, small caps, you might not know what small caps is. Small caps, I'll show you what small caps looks like. So this is regular here. You can see that we have the capitalizations at the beginning of the sentences. And so it's pretty standard. There's nothing crazy about it. For small caps, I'm going to select this paragraph and we're going to right click. We're going to go down to font. We have this little here we can cut, copy paste, font, paragraph. You could do all kinds of things. 
we're going to go to font. Now when you click font, you're going to get this little window that pops up. The font is going to show you what kind of font we have. We have Times New Roman, regular font style, 12 point font. That where the firm, pretty much well, every law firm I've ever worked at uses Times New Roman, regular, 12. That's pretty standard. We're going to set it to small caps. Now, all caps, it shows you an example here of what it looks like. All caps is just going to make every little, every letter capitalized. We don't want that. We want small caps. What that does, now that may not look terribly different, but what that does is it does make every letter capitalized, but they're still smaller than the, than the ones that are actually capitalized. So every letter is going to be capitalized but the ones that are not typically capitalized are going to be smaller. We have now selected small caps. We're happy with the font. I'm going to leave that alone. And let's say we want to make, well, we'll change the other stuff later. First, I want to show you small caps. So we've got small caps selected. So we're going to click OK. Now, I'm going to show you how to zoom in too. If you want to, if you want to blow this up and make it bigger, Sometimes you do want to blow your documents up, especially if you got them from a client and they're corrupted and you have to <laughs> redo the whole thing. You do kind of want to blow them up. Okay, so what you can do if you want to zoom in, there's a zoom down there that you can click on, or you can hold down your control key and your little roller on your mouse right here. You see this little roller? You're going to take that wheel Maybe it's a cordless mouse. So you're going to hold down your control key. You're going to put your finger on that mouse. I'm holding down the control key. Roll it. Just one little click. It's going to make it a little bit larger. Roll it again. It's going to make it even larger. You can automatically zoom in and out on your document by rolling this, holding down the control key and doing that just a little bit. So now you can see that small caps font. See how every letter is capitalized, but the first letter of the sentence is just a little bit larger than the other letters in the sentence. So let's say we want to change the font color. Again, you can select by left clicking on your mouse, holding that button down and dragging it across. You can put your cursor up here, do control shift down arrow. Any way you want to select it is fine. Now we want to change the font color. You can do that up here under font, or you can right click and again, pull up that little font window. You see, we still have our small caps checked. We want to leave that alone. And we have a section here for font color. Let's say we want to make it blue. We're going to make it like a pretty blue and click okay. And now our font is blue. Let's say we also want to make the entire thing bold and italicized. Select your entire paragraph, control shift down arrow, or click up here, left click on your mouse and drag it down, however you want to do it. If you want to make it bold and italicized, you can hold down your shift, your control key and do B I just hold down your control key, click B, click I. You do not have to let the control key go in between those two. You can just hold it down. If you want to underline it, you just control U. There we go. Now, let's say we want to change the font. Select your paragraph. Go back to your font window. Let's say we want to change the, and you have a lot of choices for your font. You really do. Let's go with good old Arial. Arial is pretty good, pretty common. Arial, we want to make it Arial 14. A lot of the older attorneys I used to work with, you know, said they couldn't read Times New Roman as well and they liked Arial better, so. Or some of them like Courier, so I would use Courier for them. You get used to their preferences after a while. All right, so you like the way this looks. You think, hey, that looks really good. Let's bring this back up. I really like the way this looks. So say you want to format these paragraphs the same way you did this one. Well, 
you could select them and go through and do all the stuff we just did. Or you can click anywhere in this paragraph. Now what you want to do, leave your cursor in the paragraph and you want to come up to Format Painter. It's going to have a little paintbrush. You can right click, so you can choose Format Painter up here, or you can leave your cursor anywhere in this paragraph. Right click, and you have to come up here to your ribbon where you have your font information, and you're going to see a little tiny paintbrush, just a little small paintbrush. Click on that paintbrush. You just have to click on it once, but I'm going to show you something in a minute. So we've clicked on that paintbrush one time. Now, when you bring your cursor away from there, you're going to see next to your eye beam a little tiny paintbrush. It's very small, but there's a little bitty paintbrush right there. If you bring it over here, it goes away. If you go outside of the margins, you just have your arrow again. Bring it back. There's your paintbrush. Now what you do is you select the, the uh, paragraphs that you want to format just like this. You bring it over, select your paragraphs. You, what you do is you hold down your left mouse button, select what you want, and then we're going to let go of the left mouse button and watch what happens. It made it just like that one. Now, once you let go of that left mouse button, though, the little paintbrush goes away and your ability to format paint is gone. Your magic power is extinguished at that point. You're a pumpkin. You can't do it anymore unless you go back and choose Format Painter again. Well, you could say, but what if I wanted to format this paragraph and this one way down here? Am I going to have to keep clicking Format Painter and doing that? You don't. Because there's another thing you can do. Say you want to format multiple paragraphs and say they're it's separated. They're not right next to each other. Like say you want to do this one and this one, but you have a paragraph in between. Well, go back to the paragraph that's formatted the way you want it. Right click in it again. Now this time, you're going to go up to that format painter and I want you to double click it. Click, click. Now we have click clicked, not one click, it's two clicks. Now you got your little paintbrush again. So we want to say we want to do this paragraph in, the, or in this one. So again, you're going to bring your little cursor over here. You're going to hold down that left button on your mouse and drag it across. Let it go. But look, your, your little paintbrush is still there. You don't have to go back up there because you double clicked it. It is going to continue to format everything that you click. You hold down your left mouse button, click and drag it, and it's going to format it for you. As many as you want to do, it will not stop until you tell it to. I don't know if you can see it, but up here, this format painter now has a little border around it. If you want the Format Painter to stop, you can hit Escape and it will go away. Or you can just click on Format Painter and it stops. And it will no longer do that. So I'm going to undo that stuff that we just did. Let's say you, you did these, you formatted these and didn't mean to. Again, you just do Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, until you get it back to where you want it. So that is Format Painter, and I love Format Painter. I really do. Now let's say you have a lot of crazy formatting in here and you don't like it, and you want to strip all of the formatting out of it. You can select your paragraph, right-click on your mouse, click that right button, and it's going to bring this up. Now you could go in here and manually change all this if you want to. You can unselect bold, italics, underline. You can change the font. You can change the font color. I mean, you can do that. Or, while you have your paragraph selected, pull down your control key and press the space bar. And it strips all of the formatting out of your paragraph. And now, if you, now, but I will say, 
if you did have some formatting in there you wanted to keep, it will take that out as well. It is going to strip it all out and make it just the text. And there's not going to be any other formatting to it. So if you don't want it to strip all of the formatting out, you may not want to do control space bar. But that is how you remove the, the uh, formatting from any text. You select it, hold down the control key, and press the space bar. And it will remove all of that formatting for you. And that is going to do it for today. We have played around with Word a little bit. Um, there's plenty more that we could discuss if you like. I would like your feedback on the format of this video. Just let me know what you think of it and if you like it. Um, I can try a different audio setup. I know that the audio on this one is going to be a little different. Uh, please let me know how you liked it. And if you would like to see more videos of this nature, if you would like to see uh, some more little videos, I could show you more things about Word if you're interested. Excel, I could show you some things. I am not as good with Excel, but I could show you a few things if you're interested. Just let me know. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed getting to see some little tips and tricks from Word today. And eventually I will finish this book. <laughs> I am working on it, but I have a lot of other stuff going on, so I haven't made as much progress as I had hoped, but I am still working on it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed getting to play around with Word a little bit today, and maybe you learned a couple things. And thank you so much for being here. I really hope that you have a wonderful day, and I will see you again soon.